I, I feel like I get to live out a lot of different lives that I didn't get to live um, and tell a lot of different stories that are completely different from my story. And I feel like there's something really fun about that. It like heals my inner child in a way. And it's just, it, it's just so much fun to go on an adventure that isn't real, that somebody else pays for. <laughs> Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home program. I'm Zoriana Kitt. It's my pleasure to introduce actors Juliet Amara, Amber Midthunder, Sarah Pigeon, Fali Rakutu Havana, and Case Walker. Well, welcome to our panel on Young Hollywood. Let's kick this off. You know, we all have the coveted SAG card, and I would love to know how each of you earned your SAG card. Anyone jump in? <laughs> Should it be me? Go ahead. Um, so I'm a Canadian um, and I booked a series regular on a project that was based in the US. And so then I got shipped off to the US. I did one season on that and we just filmed our second season. And they said, you have to get your site card now. <laughs> So that's how I got my SAG card. What was the name of the show? The Big Door Prize. X oh, the one that you're currently on. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Awesome. All right, who's next? Mine, mine was the same exact thing. I feel like SAG card stories <laughs> would be better, but now they're like, I booked a job and had to get one. <laughs> it, is, it is a coveted thing to have. So I, I got mine when I think I was 14 and I, I kind of knew what it meant to get one, but they were just kind of like, you have to do this if you want to do the project. And I'm like, great, let's do it. And that's, that's the project I'm, I'm still working on. It's been like six years, but yeah, when I, when I originally got it, I was like, oh, interesting. This is like, you gotta have this, yeah. That's great. So the two projects that we'll be talking about with the both of you specific to you are the two projects that earned you guys your SAG card. All right. Yeah. Well, um, Amber, please don't tell me that you got your SAG card when you did pray. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I was like pretty young. I was in like, I think the fifth grade um, and I was less interested in the card and more interested in the pin that came with the card. <laughs> and I thought that was like super cool. Um, <laughs> And I don't remember what it was on, but I think it was like, I think I had like a line in a movie and I was like a kid in a classroom or something like that. And uh, I think the first like SAG thing I ever did, I think my like Taft Hartley was on like a DWI commercial. <laughs> um, and then I had like two, you know, a line in a movie and then a line in a movie. And then I was a must join and I got the card, but I also got the pin. And that was very <laughs> exciting to me. <laughs> Polly, what about you? And I don't know how y'all remember this. I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. Uh, I think it was pretty early on. I think I was like 14 when I got it. I'm pretty sure. I just remember like my manager saying, you need to get, you need to be SAG now. Cause I guess I did enough work. It's like you have to do four SAG projects or four days working on a SAG set before you can join. Right. Or something like that. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, I just remember getting it when I was like 14 and everyone was super excited about it, but I didn't know what it meant. I was just like, all right, cool. And Sarah, what about you? Do you remember what project that was? I'm sort of in the same boat. I, um, I, I remember taking a photo of when I got my card, like a selfie and sent it to my family. Um, but I think it was around the time that I did the pilot for the wilds mm -hmm. and um, I think I, I either got it right before that or right afterwards. And I've kept every single one, like every year when they reissue it, I have them all in a yeah. Ziploc bag in like my keepsakes box. So oh, Juliet, let's start with you and uh, tell us how you, I mean, you, you played Chris O'Dowd's daughter uh, on this fabulous show uh, and uh, tell us how that came about. Yeah, so I played Trina Hubbard on the Big Door Prize. Um, our first season, actually, we just had our finale episode air, so now it's bingeable, which is great. Um, but yeah, I remember the first time that I read for it was right here in this room. That's actually my little sister's room. And I read for it, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before that, um, over the Christmas break. And <laughs> I remember when I first got the script, I actually turned it down just because I didn't even have time to read it. And I was working on another project at the time. And 
I was just really stressed that week. They still hadn't found their Trina and they came back to me a week later. And then I had a lot of time that week. And I remember asking my brother, my sister and my mom to each read a scene with me because I just wanted to like send it. Um, and it just worked out really, really great. And so I sent it off. I remember in this house, though, I don't have any self tape stuff. So I used this lamp that I'm using right now and I put it on a chair by this twin sized bed and I put my uh, laptop on some pillows and held up my phone. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. <laughs> So that's your good luck room right now. Your sister's room is the the good luck room. Yeah, it used to be it used to be my room, but I no longer have a room in this house. So I yeah. <laughs> well, Sarah, you play a young Catherine Hahn uh, in Tiny Beautiful Things, and before that, you were on the Wild. So you had mentioned before that got you your SAG card. Um, so tell me what your audition was. Did you know that Catherine Hahn was already cast as the older version of your character? So was there some resemblance factor already kind of going in your favor? Um, yeah, I knew that she was attached as Claire. Um, so I guess in some ways, right, like, you know, we had to look somewhat alike uh, in order to get the audition, um, unless that was a, a, a choice. But I, I think we share like enough of a resemblance. Um, and yeah, I saw her name attached. I saw the creative team, like it was sort of a no brainer to audition for it. Um, mm -hmm. And I made my, I, I really fell in love with the script sort of right away. Just the writing was so fantastic. And it was one of those projects where it just made sense coming out of your mouth. And, um, but I really loved it. So I had my friend probably do like 15 takes of the same scene, just cause I really wanted to make sure I got it. And I can be quite obsessive about doing it over and over and over again. Cause I've, you have so much control on a self tape. Um, but yeah, sent it off. And then a few weeks later, I did a, a test and I did that in my mom's in my mom's living room in Michigan. Um, and then like two weeks later, I was on a plane to L.A. So, Incredible. yeah, it was fun. Uh, Case, you are on an amazing comedic show, The Pedigree, SNL showrunners, Molly Shannon, all these funny people. When you were auditioning, or did you feel like you had to have your funny on in this case? <laughs> Man, I was I was so naive. I didn't know what I was doing. My my uh, my dad was with me in L.A. I just happened to be out there and we got an email about the audition and, and he's like, all right, we're going to drive across town. But first, I want you to call your Colorado acting teacher, um, Colorado. I, I, I kind of split my time between here and, and other places. And um, she she thought it was a scam and she's like, don't go, don't go, don't go. And my dad's like, we're going. And so we drove across town and uh, went to the audition, saw one of my my friends at the audition. Um, and I just, yeah, I was so naive. I didn't I didn't know anything about the project. I just went in and was like, got to do it. And, and uh, yeah, it was it was uh, quite the experience. And and so after that, what was there a callback that you kind of moved up a chain? of? <clears throat> yeah, there was. Call? There was a callback. My acting teacher was like, this is even more of a scam. No way you got a, got a callback. She's great. She just was like, no way this, this kid got a callback. I didn't have an agent at the time. And then I went in the final audition and um, I showed up with a ukulele and like, just like acapella a song for them. And I think there's a joke in the show. We, we say the grind doesn't stop. And I showed up and I was like, you know, 14 year old me, like the grind doesn't stop and just did the audition. I was so naive. It, it just worked. <laughs> But, but being naive also meant that you had nothing to lose and you had, exactly. there was yeah. no nerves or it's mm -hmm. not like you wanted it so badly that you were going to somehow screw it up. You just, you were, you could just go there because it didn't matter if you got it or if you didn't, because you had no concept, right? Yeah. And there's something so valuable to that, right? Even now as, as, as a more experienced actor, finding that balance between like, okay, I did the work and now I should just do the tape and run it. Like there's something really valuable about not even, you know, low stakes, right? There's no high stakes to an audition sometimes. So. Yeah. That's a good attitude to have. Um, Folly, uh, your show, I mean, oh my God, Carrie Washington, Delroy Lindo and Unprisoned, you cannot ask for, better actors to learn from, especially starting out in your career. So tell me about that audition. Yeah. Um, I was in Oklahoma at the time I was filming an independent film. And um, uh, I remember I was watching, I'm a big horror movie fan. I was watching the ring and um, 
I get a call and they're like, oh, we have an audition for on prison to star in Kerry Washington. And, uh, you know, who doesn't freak out over that name? It's Kerry Washington, right? So I uh, hung up, called my acting coach. We had to do like some whole makeshift taping thing, kind of like Juliet's going on in her uh, in her room, the yeah. phone on the pillowcase, yeah. you know, the uh, just the random lights in the room everywhere. But uh, we taped it, we got it in and, um, you know, got a call back. Got to meet with Carrie, read with Carrie. She loved it, booked it. And then uh, the rest is history, right? That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and now, oh, Amber, Amber, I'm just trying to figure out what project we should talk about because we, Prey, we want to talk about Prey, but I know you're also in production on a show right now, too. Um, so uh, Prey, that must, they, they were looking for a specific cultural <clears throat> cultural representation, the script called for that. And so tell me how you came about auditioning for that. Um, I mean, in the really conventional way, I guess, just my, you know, my manager sent me an audition and I didn't know anything about it. It just said like Dan Trachtenberg, 20th Century Studios. And that was really like all the information I had. And Truthfully, I was quite suspicious because I was like, what does a studio want with uh, period piece native people? <laughs> That's yeah. not usually what they want. And so I was confused and I read it. And, you know, I think kind of similarly to, you know, what Sarah said, it's like it just kind of felt really right. Like when it happened, even though I didn't know a lot about it, I think just like putting the character on just felt really like natural. And my relationship with Dan really, I think, meshed quickly um we first had like a zoom before zooms were popular before the pandemic um in you know like right before in like january or february of 2020 and then the project went away for a long time and then it came back like a year later and i had no recollection of it at all <laughs> um and then and then you know my manager was like no it's because it was under like a code name and you know all kinds of things so i just like I was like, what are you talking about? I have no idea what this is. Um, and then we like got into tests and, you know, flew out and did some scenes. And that was when I met Dan in person. And it just really like kind of all came together in like a really special, um, you know, in like an undeniably special way. Yeah. Well, the, the film really was, uh, it was huge when it premiered on Hulu. It, it broke records at that time and I know that right now you're on another project that you can't talk about too much but from what was reported in the trade that's called Res Ball um, and it's a story about uh, Native American uh, soccer team I think and it's produced by LeBron James basketball sorry um and it's produced by lebron james uh, for netflix it, yeah. is that it sounds great <laughs> look at folly yeah. laughing already folly's like i want to be part of that um so is that something that came as a result of the success of prey or um, and did you or meaning like did you have to, did you not audition for it or did you still have to audition and kind of prove your worth uh despite the success of prey no, I definitely auditioned for it. I mean, I, it's I, it's the it's a project that I really love, and um, you know, Sterling Harjo and Sydney Freeland co-wrote it, and Sydney Freeland is directing, and those are people who I both know personally and are artists that I love and care for, um, and I really respect what they do. But yeah, the character that I ended up playing is just like she's really she's like really somebody. Um, and so I think that was probably a role that they definitely had to audition. Um, yeah. And it was very like, very last, like final hour kind of a thing, but um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the characters and get, get into a little bit of a deeper dive on your characters. Kate, I, I find it kind of funny and ironic that your character is a child star while you're yeah. also a child star. Like there are some... Uh, <laughs> parallels going on here um but at 14 when you were you know when you were when you were naive and you booked this role and you just went into it you weren't thinking I'm a child star because you weren't a child star at that point yeah. so yeah. how did you approach playing the character were you again naive and thinking that you were going to play in a certain way or did you kind of get down to business with your Colorado acting teacher 
Oh man, I, you know, I never ended up working with my Colorado acting teacher post, post this, but, uh, no, I, uh, I just, I just learned a lot. I, it was honestly like I stepped into some pretty big shoes and, and have really, and have had to fill those shoes over the amount of years working on the project. So I'd say, um, the, this project has made me, made me an actor, made me kind of, you know, um, give, given me the experience I have today. And so at that point, I really didn't know what I was getting into. And it was almost learning what I was getting into and going, oh, this is what we have to do in the second season. This is, you know, you're growing up, mm-hmm. you're working with Molly Shannon, you know, learning who these people are and how they work. And, um, and that's really where it came from. But at the start, man, like I, I kind of, again, was, was very um, just like, Oh, this is sick. I booked a project when you're 14. You, it's hard to fathom it. So it was almost learning how big the project was and then filling those shoes. Um, and yeah. this season, do you find that you have formulated a well-rounded character where you've been able to pull from different things for him and to really create a backstory for him? Or yeah. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. This season we jumped two years in the future, so it's honest. It's playing a. It's, it's it was a diff, totally different approach for me. Um, I'm playing someone who's a lot more aware of himself. He's 18, and in previous season he was like 16 and 15. So now he's like when Justin Bieber was was 18 in his career. But I mean, not very much so. So um, there's a lot of craziness, a lot of different um, pieces of, of that career to attack. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sarah. Um, how, how did you and Catherine work together in making Claire feel like one consistent person? Because you guys don't share any scenes, obviously, because you're you're the same character in different timelines. But did you work together to to discuss how it was going to be one continuous, seamless person so that it's not choppy? Yeah, um, we had some workshops that. Um, you know, the whole cast was a part of. There was Quentin Blair, uh, Owen Painter, Tanzan Crawford, Merritt Weaver. We were all, and Catherine and I, we were all together. Um, and then sometimes those workshops would just be Catherine and Merritt and I. And through that, we had this, um, we had an incredible leader. Um, and it was a, be a lot of um, sort of imaginative work very emotionally evocative bridging our own experiences um as ourselves to our character and that would result in like whatever feeling we had uh we would express physically so sometimes that would be uh, one thing that ended up in the production is a a chest rub which Merritt did and now all three clairs that are in it uh incorporate that at some point um so I think that certainly helped. Um, I was able to go to set the first, like the first three days when Catherine and Quentin were shooting, and it helped me just see, like, oh, this is who this person is. Um, but I, I think a, a big testament is in the writing, and you know, th- these characters erupt at the same thing, they melt at the same thing, they speak in a certain rhythm, um, and it also helped, I think, that I was such a huge fan of Catherine. Like, I think the projects that she's been in are among some of my favorite films and TV shows. Um, so she's certainly a, a big source of imp- inspiration to me. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, trying to be like her all the time. <laughs> Juliet, this is probably the biggest role you had to date. I mean, you've had some spots on Riverdale and Superman and, Lo- uh, and Lois, but you kind of came to acting not too long ago in 2020. You, you were a dancer most of your life with the Alvin Ailey Dance Company, which, by the way, fantastic. I mean, they're they're legendary. So that you had a whole other career happening before the acting took off. So when you got the big door prize, and this is now like a full series where you're in every episode and you, you there's a fully fleshed out character, mm-hmm. how did you approach it uh, based on your experience of not having that much experience and having mostly a dance background? I feel like the same way I approached all the other things that I accidentally did um I don't know like uh, I guess coming from a dance background what I learned was how to tell a story through my body and so the only difference was really like finding out how to speak in a different way so I feel very comfortable in space um and I think that helped me get comfortable with 
being in front of a camera and stuff. But I mean, also I live in New York usually right now I'm visiting my family, but I had many years where I had to try and get enough money to pay rent. And so I would do everything. I would do random freelance modeling gigs for God knows what random, like little commercials and short films and whatever I could to, because rent was due. And I think I'm just really, uh, a bold person and I'm not afraid to try things. And so being on the big door prize, it's a comedy and the people around me who work with me are so amazing and so fun loving. And our showrunner Dave is a fellow Canadian and I could hear his Canadian sarcastic sense of humor in the writing. And it was just so easy to spit out the words. And so, I don't know, it just kind of felt like, like playing house. I always say that, but it's true. Um, so yeah, I don't really know how this all happened, but I'm happily doing it with a lot of joy, I guess. Awesome. And mm -hmm. your role was not only did you have to have a fully fleshed out character, but this character also came with a lot of physicality, uh, tomahawks that you were, it, it, this is an action film. So how did you balance uh, creating a character and also the physical skills and combining that into one whole person? Um, well, we did, I mean, actually like to go back to the audition story when I did my test for the movie, we did several scenes and we did them in English Comanche. And then when I met Dan, the first take we did of anything, he came up to me and he was like, Hey, you know, I have an idea and this might be awful, but I just want to try it, which is normally the way that like my favorite direction starts. <laughs> Cause I feel like, okay, let's just, you know, let's do something crazy. Um, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And he was like, I want you to do the whole scene again, uh, but just don't say anything. And he was like, do the whole thing, but with no words, but all, all the beats. And I was like, okay, every single piece. And he was like, every single piece. Um, and it was like, and to me, it was like a really to me it was it was, felt really moving and he came out and we just like we didn't talk to each other we just like both looked at each other and nodded he was like all right moving on um and so I think it was like you know I think storytelling is a lot of things and and you know it's not just words so it's like with this character I mean there's two different versions of the movie there's an entirely English version there's also a full Comanche dub and it's like whatever language we're speaking or if we're not speaking a language at all, I think there's uh, a lot of elements to the story, even though it is an action film and whether we're speaking English or Comanche or we're doing an action sequence, I think it was important to both me and Dan that we always um, ground ourselves in the narrative and we stay focused on whatever kind of we're trying to accomplish with like the story or the moment for the character. Mm hmm Folly, um, for you, it's a comedy, your show, and um, it, it, it's not as serious as, you know, maybe as, as something Sarah would be going through or as action oriented as Amber would be going through, but it's not necessarily all out like something maybe Case would be doing. So how, given the, the, the type of show that it is and playing the son of, uh, and or the grandson of how do you create uh, a story of uh, of the third member of this family? Yeah, um, that was actually the fun part because uh, there's such a push and pull between Carrie and Delroy's characters. Um, let me think. Um, you know, with a with a show that's like uh, it's comedic, but it has very serious undertones. Um, in my opinion, that's just life. You know, it's uh, it felt really real. It just felt like something that uh, that I just get to live and be a part of. It was more of an experience rather than um, acting. But the um, I mean, obviously, it was acting. You know, but um, it just it, Carrie Washington plays the mother role so well. I just felt like I was talking to my mom at some points. You know, but um, uh, Delroy and Carrie are two complete opposites yet the same in the show. And they have different ways of trying to do the same thing. So there's always a constant contrast between them. And I'm just like stuck in the middle. And um, it was just really fun getting to to uh, to find a way to be the glue to hold 
two characters together while, you know, also trying to maintain my own sanity. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was fun. It was a great time. Well, as young Hollywood, which is what you guys are, it to me, it's very interesting because you guys have to contend with social media in a way that previous generations of actors never had to do. Does social media factor into your ability to get a job? Are our followers important? And do you find yourselves actively working to, to grow followers or even curate your feeds and tailor them to things in order to get a job? Because we keep hearing like, oh, they just want to know how many followers I have or, oh, I can't post this because what if it, I don't get this job? Like, How real is that? in your generation's world? And this question is, please, I would love to hear all of your experiences because I know nothing about this part. I am so scared of social media. I'm so scared of it. I mean, I use it, you know, but I don't really use it to like gain followers or like I'm not trying to grow anything. But, um, but I am though, at the same time, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, I don't care for it, but like, it's something that just like needs to happen, I guess. I don't know with this generation, I don't know if anybody else will agree, but I think social media does play a bit of a factor, uh, just somewhat, you know, I, th I think it plays as much of a factor as press always has. It's just a more fluid way of doing it. So like just as press has been previous to social media when you had a publicist and there was, you know, fewer, fewer uh, options to jump into the industry, et cetera, it's just like that. But we almost can be our own publicists at times. And so I've really had to look at it like that um, because you, you can really play mind games with yourself. And the second it starts impeding on your work, it's not fun. But there is a world where you're spinning, you know, you're spinning your um, your how you appear to capture casting directors um, as much as you're like, oh, they can envision it. It's like, no, like you're spinning, you know, what kind of jobs you want to get. So it's just like a, another tool for press. Um, and it's a pretty extreme tool. Um, and that's kind of how I've learned to look at it, especially in this season during press season. You're like, oh, shoot, do I have to keep posting again? And it's like, nope, it's just work. It's just business. Call it a day. Yeah. I have a friend who's a model and he um, is trying to break into acting. And anytime he is up for a part, super, super close, he puts his Instagram account on private <laughs> because he doesn't want them going through his social media because he wants to be taken seriously as an actor and he doesn't want them to see his modeling photos. And is that, are, are things like that factors for you guys? I mean, Juliet, Amber, Sarah, um, all of you guys just feel to feel free to just throw in your uh, opinions. Um, I don't think I've really thought about like putting my account on private. I'm not incredibly active on, I ha have a social media. Uh, I have an Instagram account. I use TikTok, but I don't post on TikTok. Um, and I've, I've never considered like going private for an audition. Um, maybe I will, but yeah, I think sometimes there's this pressure of feeling like, will they believe me as a character if they know who I am in real life? Um, but I guess, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if I've really ran into it head on in the sense of like losing a job because I didn't have X amount of followers, but I think it, it certainly is that that does exist in the industry. Um, you know, in, in some areas, I don't, I, I'm, I don't think I'm naive enough to say that it, do, it doesn't have an impact. Um, you know, C case, I think you're right. It is, you can act as your publicist in some ways and you can, you know, s spread information about yourself and share articles about yourself and photos of yourself. And then also, you know, show who your circle of friends are. Um, you know, I think it can sort of paint this idea of like where you and regardless of being in the in the industry or not, I think that social media is able to make this like physical structure of your place socially, which I think can be really um, uh, it's it's sort of made up, right? Like you can tag someone who you think has like social clout um, that isn't actually your friend, but then the world thinks that they are your friend. I'm going on a tangent. This is clearly I'm uncomfortable with social media. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it does play a role. I don't think it always does. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it at that. Amber, I feel the same. Yeah. I agree. I think like, I mean, I definitely have not figured it out for myself. And I think the concept of like, of it, I think it's hard to speak to that because it's like I'm I, I also just have questions about it, I think because like I'm not the person doing the hiring so like I don't know you know how much it factors in and probably different in different ways for different 
jobs and and people and stuff like that, you know, and I'm sure there are even people all in one project who have different ideas about who they should hire based on social media and stuff like that. But I think like for me, it's also, um, I also am not super active, but I think it's like, it can be a tool in a lot of ways. I think for the vehicle of what you're saying about yourself and also of like, you know, interacting with the world and like, you know, I think a cool part of like our job is that if you have people paying attention to you, then you get to say something with that. And I think it's also a good opportunity to like say good things or to, you know, point people in a direction of like, Hey, maybe help these people or look at that thing. And um, I also think about it in that way, you know, that's also like something that I think it is a cool part of our job that we get to do. That is a cool part of social media also. Like supporting your co-stars, other projects, that kind of stuff. Acting yeah, as a- and like causes and like, you know, like issues and, you know, whatever yeah. stuff like that, like activism-y kind of things too. Yeah. Juliet, you've been quiet on this front. <laughs> well, you know, I I think social media can be fun for some people, not fun for other people. I have fun on it. I think I just try to be myself on it and just post things that I think look nice and are fun and like maybe show off. I don't don't know my personality. I don't know. (sighs) On the subject of does it affect jobs you do? I don't know. I'm not doing any hiring, but it is interesting because it did affect one of the jobs that I got before where when I was working on season one of the big door prize last year, Um, one of the women who was directing one of the blocks, her name is Molly McGlynn. She was casting a film and I play a completely different character than the character that she was looking for, for her film on the show that on the big door prize. And I didn't get to spend too much time with her, but she followed me on Instagram and based on my, based partially because of the work that I was doing with her and partially because of what she saw that I could be on Instagram. She was like, oh, I actually think you'd be perfect for this one character that I'm looking for. Um, So I think it really did help. And also, Amber, I worked with the Pharaoh on that. So I think it's a funny, funny connection. (laughs) That's so cool. That's funny because actually, Sarah, I worked with Quentin. No way. Yeah, we were on a show. Oh this is such a small world. Julia, you, you work with Josh, right? Josh Cigar? Love Josh. Yeah, he's the best. He's the best. Oh he's, he's a regular on, on my show, so we're... He's yeah. regular on my show, too. He's my big brother. Best. Regular on every show. Oh, he's a reg- he's, he's <laughs> always working, right? He's always working. I love him. Cool. Well, we have one last question before we have to wrap this up. Just when it's getting good. Now, now that we're all connecting the dots and finding out that we're somehow industry related to one another, right? Um, Let's talk about the craft of acting. You guys are in this presumably because you love acting and it is a passion. Maybe you just want the fame and fortune and the money, I don't know. But my question to you is what do you get out of acting? It's a very deeply personal question because it's different for everybody. And I would love to know what it means to each of you. And and whoever is ready to answer, please go ahead. Oh, can I go? Yes. I I feel like I get to live out a lot of different lives that I didn't get to live um, and tell a lot of different stories that are completely different from my story. And I feel like there's something really fun about that. It like heals my inner child in a way. And it's just it's just so much fun to go on an adventure that isn't real that somebody else pays for. (laughs) That's great. That's great. Folly, I'm going to just choose you. All right. Um, I mean, I'm just addicted to it since, uh, first time I ever booked anything and then you walk on set and it's like a whole new it's like a whole new world. You get to be a whole new person. You get to do a whole new things. You get to say new things, try new things, eat new things, uh, be new things. And um, I don't know, there's like a high that comes with that. And I'm just like, I don't know, every job is different, different people, um, different places. You get to travel, you get to, you know, and um, it's just, You're it always feels- You're chasing high. You're chasing Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. You know, when I'm acting, when I'm doing my own personal thing, I feel as though I'm two different people. It's like, uh, it's like two different me's. And when I'm home, I love being home, but then once I'm home for too long, I want to get back to the other, you know? So it's just like a constant, just back and forth. And I don't know, I'm just addicted to it. Yeah. I find that there's just so much freedom in it. Like you get to do everything with no attachment. Like there's no excuse. Like you're, oh, if you know, you, you get to like not be yourself. Like you get to like play some, you know, a crazy person or like, I don't know if you've always wanted to be this kind of person, you get to do that and then you can go a different direction. Like there's nothing that's, you're not going to sleep with it at night. So you can kind of just, you know, in, in your brain, it's not back to your identity. You're like, oh, I'm a different person right now. And it's just, I don't know, there's, it's, that's what's so fun. That's what's addicting about it to me is you can just go, you know, do whatever. <laughs> it's like playing without consequence because you can engage in that behavior, but yeah. To an extent, yeah, to an extent. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like if you're being Justin Bieber-esque or playing that, you know, pop star that's out of control, well, you know, at the end of the day, you don't, you know, the cops are- I'm not out of control, but I can play out of control. You know what I mean? I can experience yeah. that. We have a scene this season coming up where I just like cuss out the whole set and start freaking out and I just, you could just go all day. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Sarah. Um, I mean, I, I second sort of everything that everyone has said. Um, I, you know, it's so exciting to get a role where it makes you learn something new, you know, whether it's an instrument or a skill or some physical activity. Um, but I also think it's a way to, you know, you, typically what we were watching are the highs or the lows of someone because that's a lot of that's quite interesting. Um, uh, and I think it's a catharsis in a lot of ways, because I think most of us walk around not not really allowing ourselves to feel that because we'd be, you know, it'd just be too messy. Um, and I think by doing that, it allows the audience to feel that as well, you know, to hear a story that they otherwise wouldn't have access to or don't feel comfortable uh, exploring within themselves. Um, so I think, I think sort of understanding and pushing my own uh, emotional experience and understanding of things and having to change my opinion about things because I'm having to empathize so much with the character, you know, y you get impacted by these people. I, I find myself to be sort of changed after the projects because you're, it's such like radical empathy because you have to be in your character's corner. Um, so I think I ex enjoy how much it like s stretches me. Um, and yeah, the, the result of how people can be impacted by it uh, upon its viewing is really, um, yeah, it, it means a lot to me, very fulfilling. I agree with that. I mean, on the wilds, you were one of a group of girls who, who experienced a plane crash on an island. And that's just something that's everyone's biggest fear when you're. <laughs> and we always think about something. Well, what would happen if that was me? And there's the version of you of, oh, I would do this. But then there's the version of you that is like, but would I really do that or would I be too scared to do that? Right. So, um, yeah, I, I totally uh, I as an audience member, I do get out of a lot of the things that your characters engage in. Um, Amber, we haven't heard from you yet. And you are our last one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there's just so many. They, I think it's like impossible to kind of just say and like, you know, in a couple sentences or whatever. But I think that just. I mean, for me, what it starts with is it like, I think there's just a part of me that like, does it because I have to, I think no matter what I would be doing, like if I had to be a dentist or something, you know, I think I would find a way to still be doing this just because I love it. And because I feel like I have to, there's something that like, just is, you know, that satiates my soul. Like acting just does something to satiate my soul that other things don't do. Um, and I love, and I love that. I love that feeling. I can't even describe what that is, but it just makes me feel it's like breathing. It's like taking a deep breath. Like it just, it's just a feeling that comes from nothing else. But, um, you know, I think it's all of those things that everybody else has said also. I mean, it's like, you get to meet really interesting people you get to travel. Um, you, I also feel like deeply impacted by every character that I play and every experience that I have and, you know, living that closely with another person's mind inside of your mind um and and also I think it's a cool I think storytelling is a really amazing 
way of communicating with people that you haven't even met, you know, I mean, like, I'm really proud of what we were able to do with Prey and what that did for, you know, for Native communities and the impact that it had, I think, for like, within the community and also the way that it kind of, I think, illuminated what we as a people are capable of uh, to people who probably didn't know. And so I think also in that way, it's something that can make a statement. It's something that can change, I think, the structure of the way that people think or, you know, the way that like society operates. And I think that's really interesting also. Well, guys, thank you so much for spending your time and, and talking you are young Hollywood, so I think we should all make a pact that in like 10 or 20 years, we all regroup over Zoom, see where everyone's at, and then we'll and then I'll have you guys dispense veteran advice to all the, the up, up and comers. And you will you'll be telling me about all the, the stories of when you were young and naive and didn't know anything. And and then now you'll know you'll have known everything. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. That sounds dope. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Thank you. Good one.